And we're live! Great. Because we really know what we're doing. Yep. Uh, let's start with some introductions. I'm uh, Snack Lord Dennis. And I'm Huskatron. And uh, we're both uh, moderators for the Squidmar Patreon Discord. And uh, we're also part of the team that is running an event on that Discord server called March of Armies. March of Armies is where we paint an army. And doesn't have to be a Warhammer army, though many of the people do paint a Warhammer army. Uh, but it's basically an event that runs from December 1st till the end of March. And you pick a size of army that fits your time schedule, your capabilities. Write a little plan. And then uh, we do bi-weekly updates in the channel and uh, motivate each other and have little voice chats and, and can ask for help, etc. Um, and we're halfway. So, as we started off the, the March of Armies with the podcast, I felt halfway would be good. Spexador couldn't make it, so Huskatron is filling in. Yep, happy to be here. Awesome. I'm guessing uh, let's just jump in. So I'm going to uh, pretend that I know how to share my screen. <laughs> um, there we go. And then I need to move you over there so that I can still see Huskatron. That would be nice because it's nice to see your fellow host. And then I'm going to press play. We So, well, actually, first I'm going to say what we did. We asked uh, several, or everybody participating, to uh, make us a little two-minute video about their March of Armies experience, or what they were up to, what they liked, what they didn't like. And we got a couple of videos in, so we'll play those for you, and then uh, we'll uh, have a little chat about each and every one of them. Yeah. So uh, here's excited. the first one. This is by uh, Awesome Art Freak, and her production value was definitely on point. March of Armies, a fun little affair, and this year I might have taken on more than I can chew. Uh, I am working on a 2,000 point Skaven army for a buddy of mine. Um, my first commission army as well. So looking forward to digging further into these little rats. Um, so far they have been fun, apart from the very pointy grace here. And then we got this guy here. I didn't know this till I built him. But look, he's got this little rat on his back. This big old rat. He's got this little old rat with his brain sticking out on the back. So clearly we know who's actually got the killing power in that squad. The abomination I think is going to be fun. And then the pointy boy I'm not looking forward to. This is the general color scheme. It's a custom pink that I made. My buddy really liked it, so I've been going off of that in a plum color for the other bits of clothing. And then last year I did participate and I did all 60 models from the Cursed City set. Um, it was a ton of fun. I just think that the March of Armies is a great little thing that the community does. And it's really motivating, especially when you do a lot of single models like I usually do. Just having the motivation to do something that you've either had laying around in the closet or a commission or whatever it is you have, it's just a great motivator for the community to really back you in it. That was, uh, that good. was pretty, pretty awesome. Um, I mean, just look at that force. Isn't that a thing of beauty? I love it. <laughs> it's going to be amazing when she's done with it. It's just, man, that's, that's a lot of plastic. Oh yeah, um, uh, I re I really hope that it doesn't feel too like she put in too much models, but it is a big force. Yeah, and I think she's mentioned to me before that um, that it's a commission for somebody else. So, I mean, whether she finishes in March of Armies or not, she's she's committed to finishing the entire thing, and I I'm genuinely excited to see how all of those rat people look when they're completely finished and sitting on a table together oh yeah absolutely that screaming bell mm, that's gonna be great yeah so i think we also have a close-up shot oh 
Dang. Uh, and I'll replace this shot with the actual picture she sent me that I forgot about this morning. Because <laughs> I'm a professional. But uh, yeah, it's beautiful colors. Um, she's such a good painter. And she is. Last year, her uh, Cursed City box was a joy to look at as well. See all of those different models come together. Uh, yeah, that was very enjoyable. Yeah, I like the the Skaven that she's finished so far. I think that she picked a really good scheme, and um, she's executing it really well. Yeah, absolutely. Then our next one is from uh, Heresy Lithid, also known oh, as hey. Corey. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Heresy Illithid, also known as Corey. And I'm here to talk a little bit about my March of Armies project this year. This has been, <laughs> pardon my language, one fucking nasty year. And I have been struggling majorly with imposter syndrome. Uh, I've been having a lot of mental health issues, to be honest. And that has made this project somewhat difficult, but in a way, all the more enjoyable for it. I changed my mind at the very beginning, realizing that the Gitz army was just not going to give me any kind of happiness. It was just silly little blobs of paint, one over another. Now I'm in the process of trying to learn some new stuff. And in some cases, it's really messed me up. It really sent me down a nasty rabbit hole the other day with a separate project and things like that. But it has also led to me producing what is, in my opinion, some of the best miniatures I have ever painted for March of Armies. So, I've been having a blast. I've just been a hard, having a hard time feeling it, if that makes sense. So, I'm a little more than halfway through the project. I've got some details to finish up on my smaller guys, and then I've got my three big models. And then I've got my stretch goal with the marsh crawler. And I am going to make it. Come hell, come high water, come whatever. I am going to make it to the finish line. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And y'all help. Every day, y'all help. So, thank you. And have fun, I guess. Hope everybody's having fun with MOA. That's just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. I I know how he's struggling and um it's nice to see that a community can come together to help motivate somebody to pick up the brush again, change tact. Yeah. And, you know, slam that imposter syndrome into the wall and just just, you know, cuz cuz this event is about painting. Just get some paint on those models. And um, yeah. Everybody is such a such a much more of a better painter than that they feel or think. And, yeah, uh, I, I will say one of the things that that has kept me in this community um, is the, just the the support from everybody involved. You know, the, the moderators, the the regular members. You know, everybody is just always building each other up. There's no. Um, I know in some in some communities that I've been in, there's there's like a, a feeling like you need to knock someone down, to 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 kind of like knock them down to make them get better. And I don't I don't really like that kind of vibe. I would much rather have somebody tell me what I'm doing right rather than you messed this up. This is how you improve that. You know, like build people's I don't want to say ego, but build their confidence to try new things as opposed to you know making them feel like they're not good enough so and i think it's very important to remember this is a hobby you you want a hobby to be fun if yeah you get unwanted critique or like you said demotivating or um only pointing out the negatives a hobby doesn't become fun anymore and then you don't want to do it yeah. and well, it's, wow, I mean, okay, there's... you can paint better, but you don't like it anymore? <laughs> hmm. I know yeah. that. That's not a trade-off I would want to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because like, there's there's a lot of people who say, well, I'm not good enough. Or, um, 
I'm not good enough yet. But um, the the painter who did the Great Wave, the the hugely famous painting from Japan, on his mm-hmm. deathbed when he was 80 years old, he said, "I wish God would give me another 12 years because then I could." become the painter I'm meant to be. And he made one of the most influential paintings in history. And he just, he never had that, that feeling of being good enough. But that's, to me, that's one of the things that's, that's a little frustrating about the hobby, but also kind of inspiring about the hobby, because you know that you're always going to have something that you can push towards. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of, that's one of the things I like about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, We'll talk about that a little more when I reach uh, my March Farmies post because there's uh, <laughs> there's some interesting stuff in there, and I, I really like the color scheme he's going for as well with the blue shields because you usually yeah, see them in red. It, it flips it a little bit. The nice yeah. cool shields with like the the warmer um, head coverings and shawls and stuff like that. I actually really like the choice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and his contrast on those shields is great. Yeah, and this guy's going to be epic. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see how he does the skin mm. on, on the the, do- the war dog. I, I don't remember the name of it now. I I think I briefly glanced at the, <laughs> the, I, the model. I think it's impossible to remember all the um, creative copyrightable names that Games Workshop comes up with. <laughs> it's, it's a warg. We'll just call it a warg. It's <laughs> <Yes>. fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about that. Okay, I'm going to move on uh, to the next one from uh, Jahiro. Hello everyone, Leslie here, making a quick update video for Squidmore's community event, March of Armies. I'm currently painting a Soulblight Gravelord army, and I'm making good progress. At the beginning, I painted a test model. This was just before the event started, and I wanted to go with this funky ice skeleton with dark blue armor and purple cloth. I've really enjoyed doing March of Armies so far. Um, It's helped me paint almost daily, and I've learned a lot about blending and glazes and non-metallic metals. Um, It's been really helpful to get feedback, and I'm just really enjoying the whole process. Thank you everyone in the community for all the support, and I can't wait to see what everyone makes next. That's, I mean... That was nice. That, that's super nice, and I gotta say, the models that she's painting, uh, also a little great. bit crazy. Putting NMM on your whole March of Armies, but hey ho! <laughs> There's a reason my squi- my uh, squigs, and my Goblin Riders are are not going to have NMM. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've had enough time. I, I don't do NMM. <laughs> <laughs> I That's like fair. finishing a model, not futzing around with it for extra hours. Oh, I, I really like I really like the the blend on that guy in the middle with the purple mm-hmm. down to the the magenta on the the cloak. I believe I can zoom in, but I always forget exactly how it works. Yeah, yeah, I really She's, like that. She uh, really has uh, taken some artistic colors, and it works. It works so well. It's so a really, really nice impressed. palette. Yeah, I think we and also. And then the, have a it looks like she did up. snow on yeah. the base on that one too. Yeah, yeah, I like it, that a lot. It has a really good feeling in the army. I'm trying to remember who it was in the community that I was talking to, but uh, I made a comment about it was a skeleton that somebody was making. I think it was Jahiro, mm-hmm. um, where it the the pose and the coloring and the choice of you know contrast on it made me think of. It was one of the skeletons from the the movie Army of Darkness. It just like for some reason my brain immediately went there when I saw it. That's cool. And it was That's cool. It was a cool little like parallel to me. Yeah, and it's fun seeing how this event takes people from all over the world who want to paint an army to motivate them to actually get something finished and done. So that's really cool because I think Awesome Art Freak is slightly behind. Uh, Heresy Lithid is slightly uh, ahead of schedule. Uh, Jahiro is, I think, on target, but not 100% sure. And then we'll see some other armies. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we're on to another one that's uh, 
getting there. This one's almost finished. Hello, this is Lancelot, and I'm making this video for the March of Armies submission. Um, I have been painting for about five years now. I've um, been playing these games for much longer than that. And uh, I would say that I've been more seriously painting for the last two years. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Lancelot. Um, and yeah, so for this March of Armies, I decided to do a Blood Bowl team. Uh, this is the Grebo Snotlings team. Um, obviously these, uh, do not look like snotlings. This is their cutemoles, um, version of the snotling team. And, uh, yeah, I find them quite cute. Um, I have several of their Blood Bowl teams, and this is one of the ones that I like the best. Um, I've been playing Blood Bowl since 1992, 93. Um, absolutely love the chaos of the game. Uh, you can see uh, my army, uh, such as it is, is uh, coming along quite nicely. You have all the base snotlings uh, completed. You have the secret weapons uh, completed. You have the two counts as trolls completed, which are my sloths. There we have angry and sleepy. Then we have our snotling pump wagon, one of the snotling pump wagons completed. I do have uh, one snotling pump wagon that is almost done. And then finally, my stretch goal of my Necromunda. Uh, okay. So, hope you enjoy this short video. Thanks. So this is really cool, because I yeah. actually own this snotling Blood Bowl team, and I am seriously tempted to do that as maybe my next march or something or a smaller project uh, in the summer because it is very cool but this version this alternate uh qt model version very cool I, I really like the the very cartoon choices like the the choice to make the eyes the way they are and and the the fur patterns not being all the same i think it's very interesting the way He's going about that. I really like it. Yeah, and I also think it's cool because so this is an example of where um, the army is smaller than the time investment that he has available till March. So what he's done is he's added a bunch of stretch goals that have nothing to do with the, the Blood Bowl team, but are his Necromunda gang. So I think that's really cool that he kind of goes like, oh, these are the two systems I play. I have enough time to do maybe both of these in my one stretch or my one march of armies. Yeah, I think that's a really cool way to go about it. Um, I I'm particularly, as in the color choices he's picked and you know the way he's painting them, I'm, I'm actually really impressed with the little frogs. I think they're very cool. The choice to go with like tropical uh, poison poison frogs and stuff like that from like the rainforest. I think that's a really cool choice. Yeah, I really like so, the eyes. He's he's done yeah. such a good job on the eyes. And the the models are surprisingly expressive for the size that they are too. Yes, I like them. Yeah, very cool. Okay, I think we have one more. That's the in progress pump wagon, and uh, the first of the vote on uh, guys. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go on to uh, Lasse, who I roped into March of Armies. Uh, I think a month after it started. All right, March of Armies uh, video update or. Um video um when it comes to the event of march of armies i have actually quite uh, enjoyed it it has given me uh, the ability to look at uh, my um, painting queue uh, in a different light and 
Although I did set up a good proper amount of stuff to um, build and paint. Um, life somewhat got in the way. I still have some time on me, but realistically, I'm not gonna finish um, even half of what I set even before the stretch goals, but uh, that's what that's where we are. So I did a 15 millimeter um, uh, American uh, World War II army. I, I have an army and this is more of like a reinforcements uh, batch uh, on it. And I finished two trucks. And I built a mortar team and a um, anti-tank deployed gun, which I do hope to uh, actually finish, but I don't think I will finish anything or even start anything else. But um, I didn't really plan on expanding my 15mm American army at all. I had a, a lot of other stuff planned for, uh, uh, for painting, so... What I like is that March of Armies gives me that uh, kick in the ass to uh, to actually do more um, army stuff, which uh, has honestly been uh, quite fun, and this makes the army more more fun to play. Uh, so this was my first one, and I'll happily join in on the next one. So yeah, thanks. Well, that's always a good review. Yep. I, yeah, that was, um, was cool. I uh, lost uh, as uh, one of my local friends, uh, well, my only local friend, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, he uh, comes over and paints. Uh, not often enough, but quite often. I always enjoy hanging out with him, uh, and it's fun to see how different we paint because. 15 millimeter is just very different than the, the Games Workshop stuff I paint. Yeah. Um, but we do both have a problem. I uh, Mine is much bigger than his uh, with uh, collecting too many miniatures that we might mm -hmm. never paint. And I feel like March of Armies really gives at least me and I think both of us a reality check in how much time worth of miniatures we have collected. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I, know. Uh, I, don't know how I that feel is like for you. I feel like it's the same for me because uh looking at my squigs, it's I definitely have more models than I think I can finish reasonably in the next decade. <laughs> Just at the, because of the speed I paint and and you know the I know we you and I have talked about my I don't want to call it perfect perfectionism, but my um I don't usually paint for play. I paint for pleasure. So it's like, I want it to look as good as it can possibly look as opposed to, all right, I've got it tabletop ready. I'm going to throw it on the table and we're good. Um, and March of Armies has definitely pushed me to approach painting in a different mindset. Um, Cause otherwise I would, I would finish like two or three squigs and then I'd be, <laughs> it would be the end of March. So, so, I really struggled when I uh, started picking the hobby back up a couple of years ago. Oh, that must have actually might have been 10 years ago. Um, that I didn't really feel competent or good enough to paint certain models because I might ruin them. And at some point I, I kept painting less and less and less until I almost stopped painting because I didn't feel good enough. And at that point I went, this is silly. I'd rather just paint, because that is the thing I enjoy doing, than worry about the end result. Yeah. And I had a long chat with Squidmar about this as well when I joined the Discord server. And he gave me such a good quote that I, I kind of made that into my painting motto. And the quote was, I don't want every bottle to be my best. Because I just enjoy painting more when I don't expect that. Yeah. And of course, I also want my models to look good. But it doesn't have to be the best. It can just be good. And that that 
you know, place where I think this is medium, this is good, this is excellent. I have those, but I don't want to aim for excellent all the time. I'm aiming for good, and sometimes they turn out excellent, sometimes they turn out good. Either is fine. Yeah, and I, I, there's another saying that I've heard that I think kind of applies to that as well. It's perfection is the enemy of enjoyment. Yes, and I would I would much rather it it kind of applies with with music as well because you you can't expect all of your miniatures to be incredible just like you can't expect every song you write to be a banger and sometimes the you have to push I don't want to say you have to push garbage out to get something good but you pushing out things that are not your absolute best helps to get you ready for when you can paint your best. At yeah, that and point also, in time. you don't have to push everything out. So yeah. I often do three or four test models before I start an army, just to kind of get a feel for the color scheme. And those four models probably are going to look like dog shit. And that's fine, <laughs> because I'm not painting them to look good, I'm painting them to learn how the colors work. I'm painting them to learn how where I want to invest time, what parts of the models are important, etc. So that, and, and March of Armies helps, really helps me with that because of the time frame. And I, I'm somebody who plans it out per month. So I kind of have a goal for each month that I want to achieve. And uh, that really helps me time box the models. And uh, that's the time I have. So when that time is finished, that's the quality level they get. Yep. I, uh, yeah, I and... wanted to... Oh, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, the uh, the other thing about it is, like, it, because it's March of Armies, it's you don't have to paint them to be as good as you can. Paint them to have them tabletop ready. And then you can go back and fix them later if you have stuff you want to improve on. So, like, that's the other thing that March of Armies, I think, is really good for, is, like, trying to condition yourself away from that, well, I need to fix that mindset when you're on that specific mode. So, like, there's the army painting mode versus the display painting mode. And yeah. when you're painting for an army, like, you don't need every one of your 60 goblins to look like he can be in, you know, put into Golden Demon, right? Like, <laughs> it's okay if they all look kind of mid, and then in a huge army they'll look great because there's sixty of them, right? When I was working on my knights, uh, especially near the hooves, um, I made a lot of little mistakes, and instead of going back and trying to fix them all, I just left them because nobody's going to look at the hooves. There's just going to be a bunch of cool models on the table. Nobody's going to pick up the model, grab a magnifying glass, and check if I paint every hair around the hoof correctly. Oh, this hair is not painted correctly. I'm going to have to. He's going to be weaker on the table. <laughs> that's not how. That's I, not how it works. I wanted to include this photo just because I don't myself often see 15 millimeter armies, and I thought it was really cool. So yeah, that is very go. cool. It, they're so small. Also, I I ordered something from Peter Pig for his birthday the other week, and it is the most horrendous website I've ever seen. So if you want your eyeballs scarred for life, check out the Peter Pig website. Uh, is it like nineteen nineties GeoCities level? Worse. And, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, worse. Like oh, I've man. seen a lot of bad websites in my in my lifetime, and this one's more like "Hold my beer, I'm gonna do it even worse." <laughs> but uh, the models that are produced and um, the the range of 15 millimeter stuff they have is amazing. So I can totally see why they're popular. Yeah, it's, I, I feel I like it's the, cult. It's so bad it became cult. The detail on that sprue is really impressive too for that little tank. Yeah. For the three three tanks. It's just really cool how much detail they put into that little sprue. Yeah. So he was assembling I'm gonna fast forward to this one. He was assembling that anti tank thing on the left. And it didn't come with instructions. 
Mm. So I was looking at it and being super confused. And he was like, oh, no, but this bit goes here. And I'm like, how do you know? Uh, and he started explaining to me what type of anti-tank gun it was. And he pulled up a picture from the actual thing that was used in World War II. And it had the part. And he just went, look, that this is this part. And so it goes on the front. Yeah, I, I ran into a similar thing when I was building some... Um, it was the troop carrier that I have for bolt action. Like, it didn't come with instructions on how to put it together. So I was like, what am I supposed to do? So I just looked up the model of vehicle and, like, what it's supposed to look like based on historical photos and went, oh, this goes here. And just put it there, right? Like, <laughs> it's kind of it's, wild how, how much research you have to do with some historical war games. It's a, it's a whole different a whole different thing. But for 15 millimeter, he made these two trucks and holy crap that's the, they're really good the windshields the weathering like there's dust there's 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 Those... license plate decals and, yeah. and little things this is the size of my thumb right yeah i was gonna say the decals don't look like decals they they look like they're meant to be there to mm -hmm. me like they're they're not glossy like you usually see decals where yeah. it'll look glossy compared to the rest of the model so it's uh, he's he did a really good job with, with those those vehicles yeah absolutely love it and yeah they're they're uh, one piece resin casts so, mm -hmm. so no assembly required <laughs> aside from gluing them to the base right no they come oh really cast onto the base <laughs> Yep, ready, ready so, to paint. Yeah, no, it's really cool to see him uh, go yeah. to town on uh, these, and uh, yeah, I love him. Yeah, he okay. did great. Uh, next up from Lucas G. All right, here we are. Finished army for March of the Armies 2024. Uh, I'm really happy about being done with this project, so I picked up this Nighthound Force that I have bought secondhand a year ago. And finally this challenge gave me the motivation to finish it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it and it really helped me to set focus on things. Like for this army, I wanted... I wanted to put NMM everywhere, so now it focuses on the ones in the back, but you can see it a bit. And for me, this was like the focus point, and the rest should not draw the eye too much. So I really went on. So the basis is just some zenithal airbrush, zenithal of the, over this blue uh, primer, and done. The coats. It's like the zenithal and some blue on top, done. Like some, it could have more highlights, but didn't get uh, inside my budget time-wise. I have put a bit more focus on uh, yeah, transitions on those guys, for example. But I really wanted to set the focus. Okay, I'm going to spend time on NMM. I want to make it good. The rest, I don't care. I just want a cool atmosphere and uh and for for the army to look great and to have had this army uh i acquired it second hand so it was really helpful to not care too much about what i was doing and this was a great help like don't overthink i don't know like lady olinda she has all those roses and stuff like i can't be bothered spending like, I, I don't have the hours to do everything super nice. So I just did some general grisaille on the flower, on the thorns. Spent some time on the NMM, did nicely. But a lot of things is like grisaille, contrast on top, like this flag. <laughs> done in, in two minutes. Uh, spent some more time on the NMM on, on, on it, of course. But yeah, this is my general idea set your priorities choose your fights and uh, hopefully you will uh, paint a nice army in not that long time 
Okay, that was it for me. Bye. So, it's finished, right? He's painted his whole army in two months. Well, he has four months. He picked it up secondhand. He said, I didn't care too much about it, and I just went to town on it. And this is the result. Like, holy shit. Yep. Where, uh, where do he you was, even start? He was mentioning to me that uh, Airbrush was kind of his big focus on this one. And I, I like the, the lighting that he did with the Airbrush. Like, the, the OSL that he kind of did with the, the light on the ground. Um, and that NMM looks great. It's such a nice contrasting color with all of the other choices he made. It's really striking. Uh, just jaw dropping, and and he's right because with the airbrush you can do this with speed. Mm -hmm. Prime and blue, hit it with the green airbrush, and then focus on the details. And I liked, uh, I got a close-up of his NMM here. And he actually managed to find a way to incorporate the NMM over the blue. Yeah. So he didn't have to re-color all of those bits. He could just smear it on top. Yeah, he picked the important parts. And it's, and it's, it's really, really well done. It's, it, it's so efficient. It's, it's almost, it feels like it should be illegal. <laughs> yeah it's Lying. it's it's that kind of knowing how to execute something without needing to completely repaint over your primer or your your base color choice right like mm -hmm. that's um who was it was it a craft world studio um who does a lot of really interesting shadow colors so they do like purples and blues and greens and stuff on like skin tone right mm -hmm. for their for their their shadow colors and that's i get that kind of vibe from his nmm here because it's it ties everything together because everything has that same blue aside from where he did the osl yes yeah it kind of feels like um, a mother, mother color idea mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's amazing I really and, like it. and i think this this goes to prove that you can produce i think this counts as high quality I don't know about you, but you can produce yeah. a high quality army in not that much time if you simplify your scheme and focus on the bits that are important. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you know, based, especially considering how much time he he spent on or you know, spent on this or the the efficiencies that he built into his process. I think it really it's it's really impressive the level of detail and quality he got with the time he was given or that he yeah. gave himself. For sure. I like it a lot. Let's see. Then we have uh, Muscovado. Hi guys, Muscovado here with my little video for March of the Armies to be talked about on the podcast. Um, such a great idea. I don't know who came up with it, but you know, getting people to talk about it, that person, that's a good idea. So it was actually his comment on one of the previous podcast videos that triggered me into asking all of the March of Armies people to do a two-minute video. So uh, I haven't properly thanked him uh, before, but here we go. So he Thank came up you. with the idea. <laughs> Thank you for coming up with the idea. It was a good idea. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy this podcast episode. Um, for my March of the Armies this year, I am painting Bretonians. Uh, specifically for the old world, so bigger bases. And my first mini is finally complete, so that makes me very happy. Um, it's my third time doing March of the Armies. First time I had only been painting for about two months or so, I think. And I did some Thousand Suns for 40k, which I eventually sold a couple of months later because I didn't like 40k. Second time round, I did Vampire Counts for Warhammer Fantasy 6th and 8th edition. Um, and this time it's it's the Barrettes, so it's going well, a lot of targets. Um, what I really like about March of the Armies is though, I don't think I'll paint that much without the goal 
without the updates feeling like I don't want to be behind not in a, I don't want to get embarrassed on the server because I've not painted anything not that anyone should feel that way but it just pushes me to make sure that I get them bits complete um, and get the updates out there so yeah thanks a lot for running March of the Armies guys and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll all get the goals completed bye bye well first of all thank everybody who's participating because you know <laughs> you can organize so much but if nobody joins it gets pretty dull yep i i really like the the knights there on the left i can see a whole bunch of different colors and you know livery painted on them yeah i'm, I'm very cool. excited to see uh more progress on these uh, bad boys. Yeah. yeah one that's... of the things that really attracts me to Bretonians is the um, the freedom you have. You don't have to paint a unit to have any sort of cohesion. You can make your avocado warrior and your citrus warrior and your knight of the penguins and it all will blend together because it's supposed to be a mishmash of bright colors. Yeah, it's supposed to be different knights from all these different fiefdoms coming together to work together toward a common goal. So, I like that. Yeah, I actually feel like the the new the new old world Britannia paint job that they did, where they took everything in the same set of colors. I don't think I would have done that personally, but it it makes sense if you again want to efficiently paint an army. So I shouldn't be too harsh. In my yeah, judgment. it's it's good from a efficiency standpoint, but if you look at it from it, almost a historical standpoint, the the knights in you know England back then were very they they had the colors and the 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 emblems of their house basically and even though they were working together they were they were definitely advertising where they came from right i guess and it was technically kind of you thing. could have had multiple knights from the same house true but like so, if you're talking about like arthurian legend right like all of yeah. those knights had different different colors and yeah. coats and stuff like that so i think that's that's the cool way in my opinion that's the cool way to do the Bretonians because it's just you get like like he did basically the Green Knight here right like and it's just it's such a cool way to do them um, and you get the benefit of having a an interesting new paint scheme for every one you do you know you, yeah I had you a don't lot of run fun, the risk I had a lot of fun um, actually helping him take this photo um so that that was uh, quite an enjoyable process we uh, spent uh, I don't know. 20 minutes or so trying different things online until we finally got the black background properly and the focus of the camera properly, the angle of the model. Yeah. It's quite I, a I like fun the, process. The, the photography here really brings out his TMM as well. Mm hmm. Yeah. So he, really he like actually, that. the first photo he sent me he had the light angled in such a way that it reflected off the true metallic metal and it just became white. So mm. I said, you need to angle your light a little bit differently so that we see the metal and not the light reflection. Yeah, the only much. part on here that's got that reflection is the... the it looks like the reins. The, yeah, the gold that, or that the silver actually, right under the reins. Is that but white? No, I think that is white. Oh, so okay. That's supposed to be white. Okay. It's hard to tell a little bit. Because the white highlights of the silver are about that color. Yeah, but you can yeah, see how this is, is more reflective and this is dull. Yeah. It's a really but, well done paint job, though. I like it Yeah, a yeah. I love it. And uh, this offers out there, if anybody wants help with their photography, uh, there are a lot of people on the server that would love to help. So just drop a message in Mini Hobby Talk and... Uh, Somebody will slide into your DMs to uh, see if they can uh, up your picture taking game. Because you know what they say, right? If you painted a model and you didn't take a good picture, have you actually painted the model? 
It's almost like that, that picture it didn't happen kind of thing. <laughs> Take a good picture or we didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember the We're first time... In. What was it? The first time I posted a photo on the Squidmar Discord, you sent me a message and said, hey, if you want to improve your photography, you should do this. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that me. Was, that, was three, that was three or four years ago at this point, but that was I thought that was funny. Did it did it work? A little bit. I, hey. it, it got me to ask my wife for help because she she took a lot more photography classes than I did. So uh, <laughs> I have a physical yeah, I, person I can be like, does this look like crap? <laughs> yeah, that, no, that's useful. Um, I'm I'm still learning myself every day, but just the the basics of when is something over overly lit or not lit enough, etc. Yeah. Where are you angling your lights from? Too. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, not the best photograph, but uh, it was in the cupboard, so you know I don't want to yeah. cut myself some slack. Uh, this is my current state of my March of Armies. So I have got my ten warriors done and my five knights. And the way I did it was, um, I went for a unit each month. So I thought I'll do. One month for the knights and one month for the warriors, but I didn't want to just spend a month painting warriors and a month painting knights. So I alternated them. I did five warriors and then two knights and then five warriors and then two knights. And then I finished off the third, the last, the last the fifth night. night. And it felt really pleasant. And I actually got a lot more done and went a lot faster than I had anticipated because of I, I had that balance between different types of models that I was painting. Yeah. Yeah, and so for, I really like the, the color scheme that you picked. Um, it, it's got that interesting, like the armor looks dark, but the reflections that you've edge highlighted on make it look brighter than than it really is. I really like what you did. So I always wanted to paint. Uh, you can't really see it in these uh, photographs. You can see a little bit here. I always wanted to paint something that had kind of teals and purples or pinks. Mm -hmm. um, because I always I always liked the colors of Slanesh, but I'm more of a Teens player. So... Yeah. I was always struggling a little bit with that. And I've been playing around with this in my head for, I don't know, maybe two years. And I never really saw anything on Instagram or that anybody else had done that really tickled my fancy. And I was lucky enough to uh, be invited to a trip to Squidmore Studios. And I brought a Chaos Knight. And I sat down. And I just started painting. And I don't know if it was the location or maybe some advice that I got, but yeah, I, I this is what came out of it. And I was quite surprised myself going, how did I do that? Yeah. And on the, the one on the right that you had there, that with the shield facing forward. Yeah. So it's, it's the second one from the right. Yeah. I really enjoy the purple around the chaos symbol mm -hmm. and then it looks like you you've basically taken the teal and you've stippled it along the edge of that purple so that it the purple is there but it doesn't interfere with the teal at all that looks kind of yeah. like it almost blends into it it was really cool. yeah the, the idea was to have sort of the the reflection i i, I don't know nmm so i'm probably doing it wrong but my idea was like you give them a. Usually, I give my golds a black line around the edge mm -hmm. to make it stand out more. And I figured if I do that with purple and make it a little wider and just blend that into the teal and then do the edges around the mm -hmm. surface with a bright teal, bright blue, I'll get that feeling of of the the depth that I'm creating because it yeah. feels like that arrow is much higher raised off of the shield 
Yeah, I was going to say it, it almost looks like it's, it's some kind of chaos warped metal. And so that purple looks to me like it's maybe some patina that mm -hmm. they weren't rubbing clean. If they clean their armor, I don't know if Chaos Knights clean their armor at all. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, it, it looks almost like it's a it's like a purplish patina on the metal yeah. too. And then I did the same on, on the knights as well, with all mm -hmm. the little bits of armor. Kind of try to empathize, empathize the things. So the plan for this month is um Finish that big boy. It's finish that big boy, and I went for a bright yellow on the monster to really make it pop versus all the other colors. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna pull it off successfully. He he drew my eye immediately when you showed the full photo. So <laughs> yeah, I don't think it, my it's, attention. I think with the blue armor that the guy will have and will be on the shoulders, I don't think it'll be too out of place in the army. Mm -hmm. So it gives yeah, you the it's warm. Just, it's that nice, that nice contrast of the rest of the army as yeah. well. Yeah. So the plan is to do him this month, and then probably get some of those Marauder Horsemen in as well, because they, they will they'll be super simple. Uh, basically, brown and some flesh tones, and I'm done. A lot less yeah. uh, effort than the Chaos Knights. And then I have uh, one uh, dude left, uh, one hero, and uh, the um, the Nurgle old hammer lord. And uh, nice. then I'll have my stretch goals to finish too. So I think I think I'm on target for uh, end of March. That's good. Yeah, and and it's it's kind of interesting because it, it looks like it's less models than a lot of people, but there's so much detail to paint on chaos. That it almost like makes up for the lack of numbers, just based on the amount of stuff that you have to paint in addition to just the base colors, right? Uh, I intentionally went for a smaller size. So what I did is I thought a start collecting box is a beautiful gold paint, and then I'll add some stuff to that as stretch goals. But the the concept for me was I want to paint a start collecting box in four months. That seems doable. Uh, and I'm going to pay to start collecting box in three months and then spend the last month on doing the stretch goals. So I think I think that's nice. And yeah. it also, for me, puts it into perspective how much stuff I have. So when I'm looking at a new box now, I'm not thinking as much about, oh, it's 10 models or it's 20 models. I'm thinking... Is this going to take me three months to paint, or six months, or a week? And that helps me to kind of go like, hmm, if I'm buying models this year, I shouldn't buy more than a year's worth of models to paint, or I'll just increase my backlog. Yep. Yeah, that's that's a good way to think about it, I think. And. March of Armies definitely gave me that perspective because when I did my first March of Armies, I had no clue. I did my first March of Armies Necrons and I painted 40 Necron Warriors and it broke me. I, I had five left to paint and I just went, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to paint these anymore. Yeah. So I invited a friend over, I finished the five, started painting the other bits of the army. And it was it was horrible, and that kind of taught me that a I have too much Warhammer, uh, b it takes longer to paint than I think, uh, but it also kind of gave me perspective. This is how much I can comfortably paint in a year. Like you were saying, three models for a year. Or what was it? Five squigs. Yeah, I realized that I'm roughly a ten model a month guy. Maybe, if I'm lucky. And uh, depends on the size. So 10 if it's troops, 5 if it's knights. Uh, if it's a big monster, just 1. So on average, I paint about 70 models a year. 70 to 80. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it's... Uh, if I paint everything in, like, onesie-twosie, 
like painting one model to where I'm happy with it and then moving on to the next model, I think I could paint maybe 12 a year mm-hmm. if I fo- followed my normal tech, you know, technique. But um, that's also during years where maybe I don't have anyone that I'm playing with and I'm just like, okay, well, I'll just pick a project that it speaks to me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll do that. Um, but yeah, I think if I'm, if, if I can figure out a good color scheme and a plan, I think I can easily do anywhere from 10 ish models a month, something around there at most. Um, so and I the think, swigs are, are fun. I think it's really cool to see you combine your, uh, display painting standard that you have with the March of Armies where you're going, I can always come back to it at a later point. Yeah. And maybe doing one hero in between that you do to a slightly higher standard and then go back to the troops that you do to a slightly lower standard. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's the squigs have been an interesting experiment in what's good enough. And, you know, with the squigs having very few details, it gives me a lot of time to sit and look at the details and go, which details are going to be the most impactful? Because most of the time, people are going to see just the skin for the squigs. And the teeth. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Because you've done some beautiful teeth here. I appreciate that. The my favorite, I think my favorite of the yellow ones is probably that one that's on the right right now. He just looks so unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> I, they're such fun little models. I love them so much. Um, mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of I'm getting better now that I'm doing the squigs. I'm getting better at figuring out how much highlighting is enough highlighting for me to say, okay, this guy's done, and move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've made a little bit more progress than this photo. Um, I've finished my teal ones. So the ones, there's what, let's see, there's one. How many of my ones are teal? I've got that the two teal ones. So the, the squig boss, on or the loon boss on the, the squig, the teal one there, and then there's the little teal guy down in the middle there. Mm-hmm. I finished those two, and I've also finished... Um, I think it was my orange ones. So I've got my four orange ones as well that are done. Mm -hmm. Um, But the the thought process for this was, okay, I don't want to paint 60, or it was, I think it was 35 squigs. I don't want to do 35 squigs who are the same color because I'm going to get really tired of that color. So I was like, what can I do to make this easily segmented into specific parts and also make it fun? And I was like, well, why don't I just do all the colors? Um, and then I have I made a choice. I have the little uh, goblin in the back with the, the two symbols that he crashes together. Um, I'm actually going to be, I painted most of him. Um, he's on the, the far right of the photo. Um, he's black oh, yeah, in this yeah. one, but I've, I've almost done with him. Um, I just need to do his base and then he's basically done. And I've decided that all of their cloaks are going to be a slightly warmer purple than I have on the purple squigs. So they're going to stand out a little bit from the squigs, but they'll be a nice muted purple as opposed to like super vibrant because I want the Mm -hmm. squigs to be the focus. Um, That's really cool. I'm looking forward to your next check-in with uh, Photograph. Yeah, I will uh, keep working on it and I'll check in with a photo next time. Next week, Friday. Yes. It's so that time again. Push- yep. <laughs> so I'm going to keep pushing on it and get it done. I'm I'm glad I've only got five standalone goblins. So that gives me time to actually push on the squigs themselves. Um, and then I've so got... So with, uh, with seven Nintendo's. weeks left, what are you thinking? <sighs> I don't think I'm going to make it. it. It'll be close if I do. Um, cause I've still got a lot of teeth to paint. <laughs> so many teeth to paint. <laughs> Are you going to batch them up in, in like little clumps of do a color and then do a, do a hero and then do a color and then do a hero? Yeah. I think that's probably my best bet to keep motivated. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I, what I 
did with the the orange and the teal is since there were six of them and there were only two teal ones, I said, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to just take the teal and the orange and mash them into one group because that way I can get a little bit more progress. I can get all the way up to 10 models done or at least mostly done and then move on to the next bit, which is why I started that little goblin. And I think mm-hmm. if I do my four goblins uh, alongside doing the squigs in color combinations, that'll give me enough to bounce between them. Um, and especially now that I know what I'm doing with the cloaks for the, the goblins. Yeah, the, the amount of um, time you can save once you know what you're doing is, is insane. So my first warrior, my first, I did two warriors in my first batch of five. That took me probably two weeks. And then I did the other three in one. And then I did both knights in one as well. <laughs> so it went from really, really slow trying to figure out what colors to put everywhere to knowing what colors it. I needed, having all the colors out on my paint station and knowing sequence, which highlight color, etc. And that just saved so much time. Kind of yeah, getting it's, to a groove. I'm I'm kind of gonna have to get a groove every time I change colors, but mm-hmm. it's the the only difference that happens is what highlight color should I lean toward, like what color temperature should I pick. It's not the technique; it's the colors. So yeah. I I think if I sit down and I just go, I'm using these colors, I'm done. Just put them on the palette and go. It'll yeah. be a lot faster than these these yellow squigs took me a lot longer because I was fiddling with. All right, how do I highlight these guys' skin because they're literally just like dodgeballs with teeth, right? <laughs> <laughs> so there was a lot of that, and uh, painting the eyes on them is not as scary as I had thought it was going to be, because I on the three yellow or the four yellow ones, I actually did paint. I painted the eyes on them. It might be hard to see in that photo. Oh, you can like see Like the one on, on the top one. left there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but all of them have like a white to their eye with a little dot of blue for the for the yellow ones. Amazing. See, um, I'm just chucking a little bit of orange in my eye holes and calling it a day because uh, I don't paint eyes. It's I just, <laughs> it's just not not something that I think is worth my time investment if I want to. Like rather paint the next model than spend time painting eyes. Yeah, I think I I spend maybe five minutes, five or six minutes when I'm doing the eyes on these guys, um, and I'm I'm using a super tiny brush and I've got the the little magnifier sexy goggles on, um, and I just really brace myself and touch it, and then if it doesn't look good, I paint over it and touch it again, and then as soon as I'm done with that. I move on to the next model. Yeah, so that would be like an hour and a lot of shouting for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, okay. It took me a really long time to figure out how to brace myself so that I didn't just smudge the whole face. Um, it's so dry here that whenever I try and do anything with a tiny brush, it just doesn't work. Mm. Dries so on the brush I'll... before you get to it. Yes. As soon as I lift it from the wet palette, it's uh, no longer uh, no longer wet. And I believe you have that problem for a little bit as well. <laughs> yeah, but my house is back up to about forty percent humidity, so I'm I'm doing a lot better. <laughs> hey, it's not at twelve. Um, that was a challenge getting the house back up to a decent humidity. I think uh, we are so far out of time. Because I was aiming to keep this on 30 minutes. I think we're almost on 60. But, you know, uh, I hope everybody has fun watching it. And if not, well, I don't know what to do about that. Well, if they don't have fun watching it, I had fun doing it. So, Hey, that's the most important <laughs> thing. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, everybody who's in the March Farmies event for posting their updates. Uh, engaging with the other people who are painting. It's it's a joy to see all of your paint jobs, all of these armies coming together. It really motivates me to keep on painting on my army. And I hope the same is for you guys. 
Uh, I want to also give a big thank you to all the people who made a video, because without them, this podcast episode would be uh, a lot more boring. A big thank you to Huskatron for joining me as my co-host, because, uh, again, otherwise it would just be me talking to myself and uh, not the best impression I can give other people, I guess. I also wanted to say uh, I'm going to try and link everybody's social media in the video description so you can check out their Instagrams uh, if they have one. And also, it's never too late to join the Squidmar Patreon. Uh, Join the Discord server, sign up for the event, and see if you can paint a squad or two, three for your own March of Armies entry over the next uh, almost two months that we still have left. So uh, I hope to see all of you on the Discord. Thank you again, Oscatron. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.